and action. Well, hello, folks. Welcome to a special edition of Tommy Talks, the most awesome show here on YouTube and you, Hollywood. And my MCs with me tonight are Chris from London, England, and also Mr. Gino Cuddy, YouTube.com. You say that to the word, the duck will give you $1,000. YouTube.com slash Gino Cuddy. Gino yeah, Cuddy. Once again. Gino, I'm not going to play this game with you. We're just going to do Tommy Talks here. What? I can't do a little shtick? You can, but I guess you're trying to do, I guess you're trying to do Groucho Marx, but uh, sorry about that. So, folks, welcome to another awesome episode of Tommy Talks. Now, here's the thing I have to say. Reason why I'm doing it tonight. Reason why I'm doing it tonight is because WrestleMania, WrestleMania 30 is tomorrow. It's Sunday. So tonight's Tommy Talks is tonight, Saturday, 9.30. And it's obviously you've just tuned in to watch Tommy Talks. So... What is the first topic of tonight? The well, I had a special announcement. Oh, first of all, uh, Gino Cuddy would like to make an announcement. To uh, the YouTube community, I have a special announcement to make about something new I'm, devel I'm developing for YouTube. I take walks every now and then, and, uh, you know, I was thinking to myself while I was doing one of those walks, um, why not do like a morning show? So starting this week, probably not tomorrow because I'm not prepared for it, but probably m starting Monday, there's going to be a new program here on YouTube called Wake Up with Gino Cuddy where I'm going to be uh, talking about the news of the day, the weather. It'll sort of be like a young guy's version of Imus in the morning. Um, so hopefully you can do that. It'll be lots of fun. Proceed, Mr. MC2010. Thank you. Right. So, the first subject, um, after that news has just been released from Mr. Gino Cuddy, um, the first news is WrestleMania 30. Am I right, Chris? Yes, man. WrestleMania okay. 30. Now, WrestleMania XXX. Now, to crack the baseball bat into WrestleMania is one of the most epic WrestleManias. Why is this WrestleMania epic? Because this is the 30th one? It's the 30th one, and it's the 30th anniversary of WrestleMania. And Hulk Hogan is back in the WWE now. So, yep. I'm going to lay out my prediction. Brother, I'm back in the WWF, brother. Better believe it, brother. I'm going to lay out my predictions as, uh, the, now do them slowly, uh, Chris. Um, okay. <sighs> yeah, Bontini. Bontini? Yes, I'm doing it right now. My you're not on speakerphone, man. I put my gorilla on. No, you're not. Robot monster. Make him robot monster again. Make him roll man. Okay. Well, um, I'm, oh, man. I'll robot see monster. what I can do, man. Okay. Okay. See, ya. that was Hamza. That we may have something up our sleeves for tomorrow, but oh, um, yeah. okay. Lay out the first. Lay, lay out the first event, and I will probably tell you what my opinion is, what's going to happen in that match. Are we taking it from the top, Tommy? Taking it from the top. Here we go, then. First off, we have a fatal four-way tag team match for the WWE Tag Team Championship on the pre-show. Who's, who's, who's fighting in that match? We have Jimmy and Jey Uso versus Diego and Fernando versus... Siaza and Jack Swagger versus Ryback and Curtis Axel. Well, that's technical. That that one is really interesting because I think honestly, in between the two, um, 
The Usos have been doing good. I think the Usos, does it say who's the tag team champions right now? Um, no, but I can find out if you want, Tommy. Yes. Be right back. Gonna get some. Let me find out for you right now, Tommy. What are we looking at here? Now, oftenly, it's the tag team champions that win, but WrestleMania is a big night, so it's either the offense or the bad guys. Now, the, the guy with the handlebar mustache, we the people, a bunch of racist morons that are basically, we the people, you know. Um, they, uh... Don't, don't you know, Tommy? Yes? Right now, it is Jimmy and Jay Uso who are the uh, champions. A lot of times in those situations, that's that's against the odds that, that in the writing they wrote that, that the Usos are going to win. But predicting, I would say the Usos are going to win, or it's either it's going to be the, the other people in the match that are going to win. Uh, it's going to go back and forth if it's a three-way match. But it, it just goes back and forth. Um, so that's just a, in my opinion, that's just a filler match. That's just the, the, the touch, touch off. Okay, what's the next match? All right then. Following that, you get a triple threat match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship of Batista versus TBD versus um, Randy Orton. Now the question is, why would they have that match? Because the thing is, at WrestleMania. What is supposed to happen is there's another match he's, he's going to announce out that Triple H, I would figure that they would put the Triple H match first because they have it backwards unless unless it's, unless it's going to happen differently. First, first match, I think, would be first. Triple H versus Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, okay, here's my opinion. Daniel Bryan's going to win that match. Why, right why, do, you think, why, do, you think, um, why do you think he'll win it? Daniel Bryan is the underdog. He's the ultimate excellent underdog of the WWE right now. Everybody's announcing his name. He's the he's the flavor, not just the flavor of the month. He is the flavor of this era right now, and that is the PG era. And we've been going so far with this PG era, but the thing about it is, is that Daniel Bryan is like more than John Cena and more than the image of John Cena is what he represents. So I'm going to say Daniel Bryan is going to win, and it's. but here's the thing. Right after that, he has to go into a match. If he, Daniel Bryan wins, now here's the thing. I would never say that Daniel Bryan is going to lose, but if he did, Triple H, the CEO of the WWE, enters into that match with... Batista and Randy Orton, which why is it that the CEO is entering into that match? He shouldn't even fighting, honestly. Why, that, why? Why? Why shouldn't he be fighting, Tommy? Because he's the CEO of the company. He doesn't even be carrying the belt. You know what? I'd like to see DX come back. Degeneration. He can do what he wants. Okay. He's the one that sets Degeneration X. It's a little past due now. Everybody knows that Triple H is a part of the, the the corporation name. And so the thing is that Degeneration X is out the door, honestly. It's, it's just like this. No more. No more Degeneration. Oh, by the way, if you notice that all my needle felt is here. I, this is all my needle felt. I'll be working on more creations. And I'll have to figure out when I'm going to do another Tommy needle felting. You don't felt thing with Tommy in C2010. I don't know oh, that's going to happen. Back on topic. Tommy, Tommy, we have a, our first question if you're interested. What, it, what is, it a, is it a good comment or is it a is negative it, comment? I think, I think as a comment you'll get on board with quite well. You're going to get quite, you're going to be quite happy with this comment. It's um, who would win in a WrestleMania fight, Bane or Brock Lesnar? I would say Bane. Bane would beat the snot. If you watch The Dark Knight Rises, the way he fights in the beginning and towards the ending, he kind of gets his butt kicked by Batman. 
if it's the Bane in the beginning part of the Dark Knight, he is going to kill Brock Lesnar. He would snap his back in half. Okay, what, but what, uh, what kind of what, what kind of one-liners could we expect from Bane in a fight like that? Do you think that you can make me? Do you think that you that you can make me fear Brock Lesnar? Because I am. I was born in the darkness. You know, but it's that's basically you know different other lines like you think just because you have muscles and you have your strength, Brock Lesnar, that you can defeat me. You know, something like that. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, where, which match were we on? We just done the triple threat match. Would you like the next match, Tommy? Yes. Right, well, the next match is quite an interesting one. This is a singles match, and it's for the third spot in the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Triple threat match. This is Daniel Bryan versus Triple H. Okay, what are your opinions Triple on that H, one? As I said that in, that in my prediction right there in the beginning of the other match, which they should be crisscrossed, which they should be over, the first match should be right there, which I don't know why WWE is... I guess WWE thinks that Triple H is going to win, so why would that make sense unless it's backwards? You know, but the thing is, ultimately, my prediction is either something screwy is going to happen and somebody's going to run in and knock out Brand Daniel Bryan or something technical, but definitely I think Daniel Bryan is going to win on um, at WrestleMania. Next, next why, match. Why, why, why Daniel Bryan, though? Like, Daniel, as H. I said, Daniel Bryan is the future of the WWE, and then people would say he's not the future. You definitely are feeling the vibe of 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 these other old WWE wrestlers that are just should just retire. Should just Triple H, is a, Triple H. Triple H is a fan favorite, though. Like, I don't know. Yes, he he's a well. fan favorite, but he's past due his time. What not you say, okay. Gino? Gino? Yes? What not you say that he's past his due time? What not you say that, you know, him just being the... Here's the thing. Well, the thing with Triple H is... Well, what they should do with Triple H, what they should do with Triple H is do what they do with Gorilla Monsoon and making him an announcer or something. He's a... I mean, unless the, man is in, unless the man is in enough shape to wrestle, then I could see that. But if he's like an out-of-shape Flabo man, then he should be at the sidelines or some shit. Well, here's the thing. He's the CEO of the company now. He... he so... The only well, isn't it really Vince McMahon, the CEO of WWF... WWE. Now, WWE. I call it WWF. Okay. But the thing is, folks, that the only reason Triple H is who he is is because he married into the family. He married Stephanie McMahon. If it, if it, you know, like every other wrestler, for instance, the Ultimate Warrior. Did you know the Ultimate Warrior, before he ran out for his match, held the company ransom saying, if you don't pay me more money... I am going to quit. And he ran out, and they paid him his money. He ran back in, and WWE, Vince McMahon fired him on the spot. And I have to say, the Ultimate Warrior is one of these interesting characters that had a career in WWF and then disappeared afterwards after one after a, a main event match. That he basically just ran out into the back and Vince McMahon fired him on the spot. Okay. Tommy, we have a new question. What's that? I'm not very familiar with wrestling terms, but I've been asked, what is the best finishing move? The Texas Teabagger or the Hulkamania handjob? That was, that's a troll comment. That's is not it? even... Uh, okay, sorry, Tommy. I'm not Don't very good. Read, with... any, anything you see that it looks like a troll comment, do not read it. All right, Tommy. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that was a troll comment. Okay, what's the next match? Let's have a look. Right after that, we have a singles match: The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. Big match. Big match of the night. 
The most big epic match. match. Oh, wait a minute, Tom. Wait a minute, brother. If you're saying Triple H is, shouldn't be wrestling anymore, then why are you saying The Undertaker should still be? I mean, The Undertaker has been in the business long, as long, if not longer, than Triple H. So they're, prob they're, so they're probably, you know, both almost past the prime. He doesn't so even have as much of a film this. career as Triple wait, H. Just wait a second, Gino. Get this. Triple H doesn't have a 21-0 and 0 streak. It's going to be 22-0 and 0 when he beats the crap out of Brock Lesnar. But the fact is that this streak is one of the biggest streaks in WWE history. The Undertaker. The man that will take Brock Lesnar and take him to the grave. 22-0. and 22-0. <laughs> If that, am I doing that right? But yeah, 22 and 0. Brock Lesnar is going to lose. He is going to get the snot kicked out of him. Now leave it. Brock Lesnar was in MMA wrestling and MMA fighting, and he was an MMA fighter. Wasn't so, he also in UFC? Wasn't he in UFC as well? He was in the UFC, but the thing is, the, the, the oh, poor baby. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, poor baby. Oh, oh baby. Oh, poor baby. You know, we'll honestly, because Brock Lesnar couldn't take it. Couldn't take it in UFC. So what does your block Brock Lesnar do? He, he limps over to WWE and says, okay. You know, I'm not a Southern boy, but I'm going to join back into the WWE because my fans haven't seen me in forever, you know. And now, and now, CM Punk, good riddance to bad trash, is gone. He's off the radar. We don't need to see the stupid logos anymore. Honestly, we don't need to see it. We don't what, you're not part of the Shred Edge Society? Tommy, do you think The Undertaker is really dead? Asks Quentin. No, I don't think he is actually dead. I just think it's a storyline. I was going to say, because if he was dead, how could he be messed at WrestleMania? It doesn't really make sense, does it? He's the phenom. He's, it's a character he's been doing for a while. Ah, right, okay. Um, I'm sorry, it, it's boiling in here. I'm taking off this jacket. Why well, you take your jacket off, yeah, Polly? You have another jacket. You ready for this question, Tommy? Hold on a second, just a second. Okay, no worries, no worries. Take it in your time. Mm-hmm. 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 Yo, what's your friend's name? He should be doing this with Chris. Do it. Come on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are they doing? doing? This is from Wolf of Wall Street. This is what. <laughs> <laughs> that scene between uh, DiCaprio and McConaughey was classic. <laughs> yes, mm. and in the movie he is at. He's he, they just get done at the stock market. Matthew McConaughey has made a humongous sale. Of a, of a stock, and he puts it in there, and he's just made a sale, and, you know, they're at dinner, and he's teaching, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio's character how to work the stock market. One of the things is, one of, I'm sorry to get off topic, folks, but one of the things in that movie was, he's like, you know how you make millions in the stock market? You know, it's like magic. It's like, it's fairy dust. It's not real. It's not there, you know? And he's like, you know, this guy gets a certain amount of money and he wants to cash in his chips. Well, you don't do that. You come up with another situation, another stock, you know. And meanwhile, it looks like he's making millions on paper. But we're taking open commissions, man. You know, we're taking home the money, the bacon. You know, not the, he doesn't say bacon, but he just basically scamming people out of their money and saying that, oh, yeah, we're making you millions, but it's only on paper. But that's what mostly that movie is about, is a con artist in the stock market trying to make millions off of people and uh, profitable concerns and monies 
of other people taking advantage of people. Okay. Do you think Do you think his character is a positive character, Tommy? Do you think he's someone to admire? No, he's not. Matt, Matt are you talking about uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character in Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, yeah. Do you um? But do you at least find him entertaining? The thing is that it's he's not a character to admire, honestly, because he he gives these powerful speeches. But in these speeches, he's trying to push these people to con people more out of their money to get them into stocks. They're buying penny stocks. These companies are not exactly big. They're small companies. And here's a here's a stack of pennies, basically a fictional stack of pennies, as Matthew McConaughey says. Here's your here's your stock, and here's they're slowly larging, and then slowly on paper it looks like you're making money, but you're not. You know. It's, you know, make it another situation. He wants to take his chips and leave, but you make up another, you have another idea, you know. But Wolf of Wall Street, I'm going to do a review on it at some point. I need to figure out when I can uh, do a review with Crystal. Um, I haven't, haven't seen her in a while, but uh, just to say, um, okay, back on topic, WrestleMania. What's the next? Yeah. Okay, the under definitely, I have to say, that The Undertaker is going to win at WrestleMania. Every WrestleMania he wins. Okay. Are you ready for this next one, Tommy? Yes. Are you sure you're ready? Yes. Are you 100% ready for this, Tommy? Come on, quit it, man. Just give me the thing. All right. John Cena versus Bray Watt. Okay. Gina, what's your opinion on John Cena? This guy, this guy right here, Mr. You Can't See Me. Yes, that guy, John Cena, the the face of the WWE. And fortunately, here's what, okay, here's mine. <laughs> Let's get into the values of, now, and recently, Bray Wyatt has tried to say that John Cena's a liar and that he has falsified himself to the WWE and is not true to his words. So, John Cena is letting this Bray Wyatt figure as the troll item affect him. Let him affect his reasoning of values and attacks Bray Wyatt. But the thing is, I would say that's going to be it's going to be up and down. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see John Cena as the heel, as the villain. I'd okay, here's the thing. Gino, I like that. I like what you're saying there. But the thing is, John Cena can't be a heel. He, he just can't. Because the thing is, John Cena's too much of a good boy. He's too much of a boy scout. On my honor to do my duty, to guide my country, and obey the scout law. Yeah, he he's uh, he following Hulk Hogan's advice and eating his vitamins and saying his prayers. <laughs> in fact, Hulk Hogan ate mountains of steroids and, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Orange Pounds, brother! Oh, yeah. Look at that! The 24-inch pythons! Tommy. Yes, I do have the LGN, LJN Hogan from the 80s. I have... Uh, well, we'll get into it later when uh, it's brought up. All right. But honestly, um, I would say it's going to go back and forth. It's going to be a tie, but I don't want to make it for every skeptic opinion that I have that every single person is going to win. It's, it's up and down with the storylines. We know who's going to win, but it's uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. It will be interesting, and I would say just don't, just watch WrestleMania. Oh, by the way, get the uh, WWE Network, 10 bucks a month. You can watch any pay-per-view you want to watch. Yep. And is, is, but, that, um, the Tommy, is that the Hey, do you know where uh, is going to be playing movie? where you can see it for free, like go to Hooters or something? You know if it's going to be playing at Hooters? Um, I imagine you'll play at Hooters. It seems like the sort of Hooters crowd. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if we're... Yeah, uh, exactly. so, I mean, I want to see WrestleMania 30... You know, and catch up on everything, but you know, 
I just don't want to be forking over so much money for that, you know, because, you know, all those pay-per-views, all that adds up to a whole lot of money you're showing out. And for a guy, like, on my budget, it's not possible. So, you know, it's like, you know, I want to see these events, and if you're a wrestling fan, you need to see these events, but they just charge them for such high prices. You know what I mean? What's WrestleMania 30 going for, like, seventeen ninety nine? dollars why don't you get the WWE Network for ten bucks a month? Ten dollars a month, man. I mean, that's like extra on my direct TV bill. That that's already freaking sky high as it is. And plus, we got our car bill. We got this bill. We got that bill. You know, we live on like Social Security. You know, it's hard for people like me who want, who, are, who try to be wrestling fans. You know, who are, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard Gina. to pay the bills and, and, okay. and have your passions. You know, I'm gonna stop you there, Gina. In England. If you want to watch TV, you need to pay a subscription every year. You need to pay £150 every year if you want to watch television. Well, we got bills like that, too. I mean, it's not like our TV service is free. It's just that... No, no, like, 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 completely. Like, if you want to watch television at all, that you must pay. And if you don't pay, they'll send a van around to your house. And you don't want that van showing up at your house. Let me tell you. All right. Guys, okay, G um, I'm guessing that the next match is the 30-man Battle Royale. Am I right? Andre the Giant. No, no. Oh, yeah. You've, you've missed out the six-man tag team match there, Tommy. Who One is One of the most important matches of the uh, century, if you ask me. We have Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns versus Kane. And we've got Road Dog and Billy Gunn. Well... I'm just going to say, if now, that is the shield right there, and that is Kane's corporate industry right there. Now, those two, they call, they call themselves the Hounds of Justice. The Hounds of Justice, they powerbomb, after WrestleMania, they powerbomb The Undertaker into a table. Oh, by the way... But. They power bomb him into a table and they appear magically and they attack John Cena. Which, you know what? So, so what? Are they just a low rent. What are they? Just a low rent version of the NWO? You took the words right out of my mouth, Gino. They are a low rent combat unit of pretending to be soldiers, sweaty soldiers that are put together. More like the BWO. They're just. They're like. You're missing Razor Ramon, you're missing Hulk Hogan, and these people are not even yeah, named. No, you got the fake Razor Ramon, you got Rick Bogner and that shit. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> by the way, in the Hall of Fame, in the Hall of Fame, Razor Yeah, Razor Ramon 2014. Yep, Razor Ramon's getting. How you doing, there, Razor Ramon, you know? How you doing? Yeah, kick up. Y'all see who the real bad guy is. You'll see who the real bad guy is. You see, I'm here on WCW. <laughs> You see, hey, so bigger. Me and D so big daddy cool. <laughs> I'll be honest. I am a WWE fan of the 2000s. I have been sneaking through old... I have been looking through old footage, old stuff of WWF, and I have to say a lot of the characters... One character that is the best of the best, Hamza would agree with me here, Bill Goldberg... Bill Goldberg was the meanest, baddest... Oh, yeah. He originated in uh, the WCW. I have this great set from WW, uh, he Home Video. Uh, WCW, he originated from here. I okay. freaking love WCW. Ric Flair, see? Okay. Here he is, right here. Okay, I understand that, Gina. But, um, um, Chris, how long did his streak go for? Uh, the... Uh, Bill Goldberg's streak. I'm trying to remember how long his streak And then was. WWE uh, made up a fake character, Gilbert. Bill Goldberg's streak, are we asking? Yes. Let's have a look. It passed, his, his streak passed the 200 mark, apparently. 200 people that he took down. Do you, Tommy, do you know what his famous catchphrase was? Yo, Who's next? There we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Do you know about it? Honestly, the here's the thing. Bill Goldberg was more meant to be a silent character, but then they made him talk. Yeah, yeah. he was like a mysterious guy that they didn't really give an origin story to. 
he his first match he walks out. I watched the first his first ever match. He comes up and he fights this guy and he beat. Well, he is not he's not as bulky as he, as he looks when he comes out in the fir his first match, but he beats the snot out of this guy. One two three pin and just keeps doing it on and on and on. Keeps just showing up and then they find out that he's a football player. And he's a retired football player. Comes in the WWE, WCW. But honestly, as Hamza would say, you know, he's just going to come in there, beat up uh, John Stinko, and uh, he's going to beat everybody up. You know, uh, Bill Goldberg's the best in the world. Yes, Bill Goldberg's the best. But is he the <sighs> best, Tully? But is he the best? Yes, he is. But uh, the fact that he put his hand through a window and slit all the way up his arm... That means he can't wrestle anymore. And my friend said that it was a rumor that Bill Goldberg was coming back to the WWE. He didn't even show up. And the rumor was false. He messed with my head saying that my my friend Bam Zone Bro on here on Oh, by the way, I got to mention something. I had said something on my past episode about somebody. His name is Robin, and that was a joke. That was a joke that's not actually going to happen, and that was a joke. So just to say shout-out to Robin. He works at my job. He works at my work. He's one of the guys that works with me as a service clerk. But just to let you know, that was a joke. If you remember last week's episode, Robin, I talked about a certain thing happening to him. It was not true. It was just a joke. But, yeah, that was it. But... So I would say either the Shield is going to win or either Kane is going to win. It's, I, think, it's, I, think, I think Kane's going to win, personally. I'm going to throw my hat into the ring here. Okay. Uh, so the, is, is, that, is the 30-man Battle Royal next? It is. It's also a Memorial Battle Royale in the name of Andre the Giant. Andre the yep. Giant. Now, talk about a few words. Yes. Alright, I am probably in this group of three guys. I'm probably the, one of the world's biggest Andre the Giant fans. I have, and let's not forget, the WrestleMania that, I mean, WrestleMania 1 is the first WrestleMania, but the WrestleMania that really started it all was WrestleMania 3 with the main event, Hulk Hogan taking out Andre the Giant on Sunday, March 29th, 1987 in the Pontiac Silverdome in front of like 93,000 some odd fans. You know, this is the earlier figure um, with him and the Afro in the 70s. But this is the Andre that everybody really knows. This is the one that Hulk Hogan slammed. You know, this is the one that won the first Survivor Series. This is the one that teamed up with um, Ted DiBiase and, you know, won against Hulk Hogan, got won the WWE Championship uh, in a controversial uh, turn of events uh, with the two referees. Um, at uh, Saturday Night's main event. This is the Andre that took on Ultimate Warrior and became yeah, yeah. a colossal connection with Haku. Andre the Giant, RIP, 1946 to 1993, one of the best wrestlers of all time, a very special man. You know, here's the uh, LJN uh, figure. One of the best men in professional wrestling history. No one can compare. And uh, Rest in peace to him. And uh, for those of you uh, who want to see more Andre, rare Andre stuff, go over to the channel that has uh, called Andre the Giant with, uh, you know, uh, that's like a black and white picture of Andre. That's my friend Chris's uh, channel for uploading rare Andre stuff. And also, there's a YouTube, there's a Facebook page called Andre Rusimov. Yeah, what's the URL so people can get to it, so people would know how to get to that? Let me see what the URL is. It's probably a confusing as hell URL. Let me see here. Let me go to my YouTube home page. Because um, currently I'm actually bidding on uh, Andre figure uh, from uh, Legend Series 1, uh, the WWF Jax uh, Pacific Andre. Very excited about getting that for my birthday. And I hear that uh, WWE Elite is actually putting out uh, a new one. Um, let's see. Where is it? It's somewhere down here. Oh, here it is. It has rare footage from 1971. It's, uh, it's 
It's youtube.com slash channel UCF and R9 U L F V V R O nine four D F R H underscore three O one Q. Okay. That's the YouTube can, channel. Can you repeat, one, thing I say, one thing else I want to say about Andre the Giant is Andre the Giant was a large man, not just saying a large man. He was a gigantic man, and he could probably fill up this jacket right here. He could just, honestly, he probably would rip the seams. On I'll the show jacket. you the footage of him on TNT when uh, he was on Tuesday Night Titans, a uh, little known... Footage. I can't show. That's copywritten footage. I'm sorry. I can't show. No, that. I'll show you later. I'll show you later. Yeah, but the thing is that Andre the Giant. Here's the thing. WWE shows his face once in a while. They don't mention anything about Andre. But when it comes to this, boom, boom, boom. Everything about Andre. Andre was one of those wrestlers that took a fall. You know that he took a fall. Andre a fall. in his last match was sick. Everybody knows it, and that's before. That's after he died. Yeah, his last match was December fourth, nineteen ninety-two, and uh, the Nepal Badokan Hall, and he looked horrible in that match. I'm telling you, him and Giant Baba, that was a horrible match, man. He looked awful in that match in nineteen ninety-two. So that's why I'm saying, you know, rest in peace to him. I mean, his last match in the WWF was horrible, but. But he fought until the end. His, he, he, after he left WWF, he went over to uh, to Japan and did uh, all uh, did uh, all Japan pro wrestling. Okay. And let me tell you, he, he did not look good in those matches. I mean, the, I mean, his last good match was him and Baba uh, versus uh, Demolition. Uh, but that was probably his last good match. After that, he just went downhill. Okay. Well, uh, honestly, that you know, rest in peace to the guy the most iconic figure in WWE. People could say either, what, if you said WWF, what would you say? You would say either say Andre the Giant or Hulk Hogan. And those were the two biggest figures in the WWF at that time. But really, in my opinion, that Andre wasn't given a chance to blow his character up, really. He was just, I'm not trying to be rude here, but they made Andre look like an oaf. Honestly, a, a big gigantic. They did, they did. I, I understand that. It was like, again, it was like Vince McMahon made Andre his puppet. Um, and there, there are stories that say that Andre wanted to continue wrestling, and then there are stories that Andre wanted to quit before WrestleMania three. But he was promised so that a, a large arena like the Pontiac Silverdome, so that's why he uh, he continued. Um, but Andre, yeah, they did make him an oaf. I hated when uh, that when Vince did that fucking shit with uh, Jake Roberts oh, and made him. Watch your language. Watch your language. I can't. You know, I, I hated that that stuff when uh, okay. when Thanks. they made uh, him scared yeah. of Damien. I hated that crap with a passion. I hate Vince McMahon for turning Andre into that. Yes. Yes. So, but Andre. He deserved more than he got. He 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 he, he really he really did because he was a great guy. He was a he was a, he was a gentle giant too. See, if uh, you want if you don't like wrestling, uh, I recommend you actually seeing him in the film The Princess Bride in which he plays Fezzik. Uh, anybody want a peanut? He was great in that film. Okay. So okay, but honestly, in my opinion, who's gonna win that match is Big Show. Big Show is gonna blow that match out of proportions, but uh. Folks, I was going to go into a winner segment, but I apologize. It's uh, getting kind of late. But uh, well, we've, we've got one more match. Can we not just do that one last match? What's what's the one last more match? What's the other match? It's the uh, fourteen diva single fall match. Um, really? Um, who's who's in that match? Well, some of the names we have are Cameron, Emma, Layla, Naomi, Natalia, Summer Rae, Nikki okay. Bella, and Brie Bella, and Elisa Fox, amongst hmm. others. Well, it's, it's either going to be, I have to say, one of my favorite divas is definitely, uh, hmm, she's part of the Hart family, but, uh, Natalie? Natalia? 
Natalia. Natalia is one of my Natalia. other favorites. Yeah, Natalia Neidhart. Jim, the, the Anvil Neidhart's daughter or something, I believe. Yeah. Well, I think maybe she would win. But okay. also, I want to say something, folks. As you know, springtime is coming around, and winter is over. And one thing I notice a difference is during the springtime, it's lighter. You know, it's your nose gets stuffed up, and, you know, you are just trying to enjoy life. And the spring is, you know, it's very, you know, hot. It's Here in North Carolina, it's, it's, it's a mixture between... It's a mixture between hot and cold. Like in the beginning of the spring, we'll have a surprise snow fl snow flurry, and it's just like you walk outside, you have shorts on, and it's just like <laughs> going back inside. It's 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 not spring yet. It's not spring yet. It's not spring yet. But uh, I have to say that definitely spring is a very uh, you know, pollen is coming out, the bees and the birds are flying out. And here at my house, the turkeys, I get woken up to, in the morning to the sound of turkeys and deer outside because they're eating all the corn and they're little pigs sometimes. And we feel yeah, we like... Yeah, outside of our window every day. See them out my, out my window every single day, as Gino said, but it's insane. But folks... I'm going to end this Tommy Talks. But thanks, as always, folks. Thank you for watching this special segment of the special episode of Tommy Talks. As always, I'm Tommy NC2010. That's Gino Cuddy, youtube.com slash Gino Cuddy. And this is Chris from London, England. From London. And I'll see you on the end side fact. <laughs>